and welcome to be my guest. The program which brings you successful stories of entrepreneurs and organizations in both domestic and international arenas. I'm Sorosha Ratanapian. And farmers are the national backbone who produces the staples to feed the nation. Yet problems occur with the way they make a living, such as the lack of know-how to create a sustainable farming, the overuse of pesticides and the outbreak of plant hopper. So in these episodes of the program, we are taking a look at a project being launched in Vietnam with a name to enhance the capacity of Vietnamese farmers in order to promote sustainable agriculture. And currently, I am granted the opportunity with Mr. Wing Tan Bin, the Senior Project Officer of Orison Sustainable Agri-Food Systems, GIZ. So, So, first of all, could you briefly introduce yourself to our fans and be my guest? Um, so, so, I am uh, just shortly named, my name is Bin, uh, working for GIZ, especially for ASEAN SAS. We call it called as uh, ASEAN Sustainable Agri-Food System. Just, mm. uh, Abbreviation of the project is SAS, or ASEAN SAS project. Okay, could you explain a little bit more on what ORSEN, SAS or ORSEN SAS is? Okay, so uh, our project is ASEAN SAS uh, focused on promotion sustainable agri food system for different stakeholders and at the national level. So to to to, uh, to uh, promote the sustainable uh, agri uh, culture agri food system to uh, focus on security and safety food production. Mm, okay. Yeah. And talking about RCN SAS, especially in Vietnam, because you are from Vietnam, okay? Yeah. Uh, on the national level here, that's a, a project which yeah. is undergoing, which is called GIZ Crop Life. So could you explain a little bit more the rationale of this project? Okay, so uh, here is uh, the, when we are starting to work with the project, we recognize that's a lot of problems. Or issue with the farmer in Vietnam, especially for rice product. That's the farmer they uh, uh, use the intensive agricultural technique, so that's the, they use a lot of fertilizer, a lot of chemical, best pesticide chemical, etc. Mm -hmm. So that's the they uh, overuse it and in uh, they provide a lot of. Uh, how to say that uh, they invest a lot of money and benefits is very low. That's one problem. Another problem is uh, the pest outbreak in the past is also a big problem for them. So now they're so scared with the, uh, the, 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 the outbreak of the plant, mm -hmm. especially that the plant, plant hopper. So that's the, uh, every time they uh, go to the field and they see just few pests and then they go to spray the chemical mm -hmm. to avoid that's the loss of their production. Okay. And uh, uh, also the crop science industry, they recognize that the, the problem with the overuse of uh, pesticide is uh, the resistance of the pest. So they have to face with the problem that when the pest is resistant again with the active ingredient, so they cannot yield anymore with the chemical mm. to address the, the outbreak of the uh, pest in the future. Okay. And the farmer um, use a lot of chemical, it's also called uh, big impact in the food safety issue, that's the pesticide residue issue. So far this rice product, black pepper product also fight with the problem, that's a pesticide residue. And worldwide market now they also write this issue to Vietnam that to reduce the use of uh, uh, chemical to mm. avoid the pesticide residue issue. Okay. So and uh, mm. also that is, uh, we, are, we know that the farmer not aware about their, uh, mm. their health, they're not aware about their environment, so that's also a big uh, issue for uh, for the uh, uh, rice or agriculture production in Vietnam. So, uh, Growfly International and uh, GIZ, especially ASEAN SAT, we recognize this problem. Both of us is uh, the have common goal to uh, promote sustainable agriculture, mm -hmm. so that we come together and work with this project. We call that is. Uh, 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 GIZ uh, crop life, just a minute. Uh, promotion of integrated best management to address uh, plant hub outbreak in dry process in Mekong Delta of Vietnam. Okay. So we work together to to uh, mm. to, to, to uh, foster the training for the farmer to adopt new, uh, not news, but IPM. We call that IPM technique. 
Mm, okay. Okay. So basically, the major aspect that this project has been tackling or address is about the pest management. Yeah. I would say. Okay. Yeah. And is that an objective as well? Actually, okay, uh, in this I project. Actually, this is uh, how to say that is uh, we we call on that is the best management integrated best management and also address the food safety. Mm, okay. Yeah. Which you mentioned previously that they are actually linked together: food safety, food security, yeah. and the pest management here. Yeah. Okay. Now next, what about, you mentioned about the lack of awareness of farmers in Vietnam of the pest management. So um, how can you build the awareness you know, of pest management or you know, the disadvantages of using um, pesticide okay, in their farming? Pardon me, can you repeat again your question? Okay, you mentioned the lack of awareness of farmers okay, in the use of the overuse of pests, pesticide. Yep. So uh, how can you increase their awareness here? How can make them aware that okay, it's not really good to use more pesticide here? Yeah, I think that is, uh, we have to uh, create uh, a program from uh, up to down. In the first, that we work with the Ministry of Agriculture of, mm -hmm. uh, and Rural Development of Vietnam, as well as uh, with the, at the local area, at the provincial level, is Department of Agriculture and Rural mm -hmm. Development. So uh, together with them is uh, we call that uh, Plant Protection Sub Department. So we work together with them to create a, a training program. So before that, we have to work with uh, various uh, consultant, uh, international consultant, to make a basic survey first, to see that's how is their behavior, how is their practice, current practice and behavior is now, and what is the problem, and then our uh, international consultant together with local consultant to develop a training program precisely to to see that's how is uh, to to to. to uh, to make that the current situation and our technical is to match together mm -hmm. to adapt it by the farmer after we training them. So before we provide the farmer training, so we also develop a capacity a human development for the technical uh, of the plant protection sub department. We conduct the uh, training of trainer. So we train them with various new aspect, mm -hmm. IPM aspect, and also enhance their skill to provide for the training for the farmer. And then uh, from this trainer, they, we call them this, uh, after we, they get the, tra the training. So we call them as master trainer. So those master trainer, they provide training for the farmer. Mm. In the first, that's the, uh, they organize a group of around 25 to 30 farmer in each group. And then the master trainer provide the training to them. Mm -hmm. And um, from farmer itself, they select for another uh, neighbor farmer. And this farmer will provide farmer, we call that farmer to farmer training. Mm -hmm. uh, also in the project, we call that uh, indirect training. So farmer training to another four farmers, so our will uh, scaling up our uh, training program to another program. Okay. At the meanwhile, we also provide uh, awareness, uh, awareness campaign to various uh, colleagues, school, university. So, uh, and also we make uh, some poster in the poster, we provide the information look like a, how to say, a calendar with the accent threshold. So in the calendar, in the very, very state of row, rice rowing state, so uh, there are different kind of pest and different uh, level, uh, rowing state of the, the, the rice crop. So in this state, farmers do not need to use any chemical. In this state, if they see some pest, for example, that's in one square meter, they can see around 10 kind of pests, so they can spray. If mm. less than that, they will not spray. Okay, so, so it's we kind of a guideline them. for yeah, them. look like a guideline, and we make it as a poster, and they can see it uh, uh, together. Uh, they can see it every day. Okay. And uh, um, the pesticide retailer who selling the pesticide for mm. the farmer, they also play very important role in this uh, chain. They advise the farmer how to do, how to spray, what type of ingredient should be used. But sometimes for their own business, they benefit, so they sell combining. Mm. For example, that's only uh, brown, uh, plant brown hopper is there, but they said, okay, they can buy this and this and this, so they can sell more products. Mm. Okay. okay. So we also, uh, the master trainer also provide the training to them. 
to make the precisely exactly what is the problem and what type of injury they should advise to the farmer. Okay. And they should know that the safety is the first issue, and the second one that is to sustain their business. Mm. Because in the future, if there are no more ingredients, so they cannot sell anything more. Okay. So it seems there are so many activities and cooperations yep. going on now, and there are so many many stakeholders. Yep. Okay. In order to make this project okay, a successful project. Okay. But for now it's time for a short break. We'll right back, we learn more on challenges as well okay, that are in facing and especially you must be you know, the specialist okay, in telling us on what can be challenges and difficulties and also the lesson learned okay, of all the stakeholders in this project. So please stay tuned and be my guest. Welcome back to the program. You're watching Be My Guest with me, Sarosha Ratanapian, and I'm still with Mr. Bin, the project officer of RSM SAS or Sustainable Agri-Food System, GIZ. In the last bit okay, of the first break here, you mentioned training the trainers and also indirect training here of this project, okay, GIZ Crop Life project here. I need to ask you, okay, apart from the success, I have to ask you about the challenges then and difficulties. What are the challenges there that you need to address and tackle? Actually, uh, so our project is still uh, undergo uh, for next uh, eight months. I think I mean that the uh, end of this year, uh, 2017, the project will end. So we still uh, carry out our activity over there. But so far, we also recognize some challenge from various uh, type of uh, stakeholders within the project. For example, that's a, the first thing that's a, the challenge from farmer. So uh, in Vietnam, I think also that's a, a, in another country, that's the farmer themselves, they are very conservative. Um, some of them is, uh, also have good knowledge, but some of them is, uh, also very, they, have, they have very low knowledge about what are they doing and also responsibility use of their chemical also very low. So that's a big challenge. And uh, when we provide the training for, to them, especially for the farm from the master trainer, for, uh, provide the training for the farmer, and also from farmer training for farmer, they also face this problem as well. Uh, they are the characteristic of farmer is now is getting older, older and older, you know, and young people are not interested in the agriculture growth. So sometimes they also the another challenge that is sometimes farmer they not uh, participated, uh, not interested in participating in the training. They have a lot of various reasons that they are busy. They want to go to the field. They want to go to drink. They want to help me, etc. And uh, when we provide the training, so we need the participation, uh, participation from the farmer. Mm. But sometimes it's uh, like a farmer, like a, uh, less participated, less focused, so that's also the challenge. And for pesticide uh, retailers, so they are already have conflict with the program. Definitely because uh, the program is uh, we encourage the farmer apply IPM. So they can, the retailer cannot sell more product for the mm. farmer. This is the conflict. So uh, actually, the government also have uh, their rule uh, or laws to force that the the retailer want to uh, when they become to retailer they have to carry uh, they have to be carry a uh, various type of training to make a certificate they have to get a certificate to be a retailer. Of course, they want to sell them more, more and more product to the mm -hmm. farmer. But uh, under this uh, project, we recognize that the the uh, big challenge for us because. They said that if we cannot sell their products, so how can they just survive? Mm. So also very difficult to, 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 to carry out our training uh, to a uh, retailer. And another group of uh, people in the uh, uh, whole value chain is uh, play very important role is uh, uh, local government mm. in this system. Especially that is a plant protection sub department of uh, this province. And their technical staff, we call that. Uh, their technical staff is master trainer. Sometimes we find uh, in the past so we find this uh, challenge is uh, when the technical the technical staff they got uh, they gain uh, enough or they gain more knowledge, they gain more skill, and then so many company, mm -hmm. private company, they are interested in their uh, uh, human resource and they come to invite them to go mm -hmm. out for working. 
So if these people they gain training and they go out, mm. so we lack of our uh, human resource in the area. That's the one issue. Another that's the issue that's the so when they gain the knowledge, they go out. So remaining this the poor uh, technical uh, uh, staff. So the quality of the technical staff or quality of master trainer also the big challenge for mm, us. Okay. Know, just starting up the project. Okay. And uh, at the uh, project level, that's in the first phase, uh, we try to encourage the uh, local government and uh, provincial level as well to participate to 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 to, to uh, participate in the project. In the first time, it's very difficult for us, a little bit challenge mm. because uh, they say that okay, uh, we we were uh, working with uh, IPM. So why you bring IPM again to here? Mm. So we have to show them the baseline today. Okay, you see, IBM is this, 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 but now it's current farmer activity, uh, current uh, situation of the farmer application of the IBM is totally wrong. So we have to encourage them to, okay, sitting again and together develop the, the new, uh, develop the IBM again with more precisely, more detail, and advise the farmer to focus on more uh, safety using of uh, Chemical. Okay. So that's the, the, the so in, in order to create a project, it's not that easy yep, because there right. are so many obstacles. Yep. Okay, out there. So what are the solutions? I'm wondering in, in terms of you know the farmers' participation or the, the lack of participation or knowledge. How do you tackle this problem? Mm, yeah, uh, as one way you uh, mentioned, that's the how to encourage the farmer to participate in the training. As you also that. They have to see that is when they come to the uh, training uh, place to see what it, it can learn. So together with uh, the training program, we also make uh, some uh, demonstration plot. So that's every uh, training we have twelve modules, and uh, each module is uh, focused on each stage of uh, the rice uh, rowing uh, stage, and then we make a demonstration. Mm. To, so farmer is believing what are they seeing. So when they see in the field, so, and then they are interested, so they can tell another farmer to come. Okay, mm. it's a very good training program. They can come and then see, and then they apply, they follow. Okay. So you turn the abstract things in or theory into a yep. practice. Yep. Okay, so they believe what they do and what yep. they actually of act. Of course, so that we need a good a master trainer as mm. well because uh, we have provide them the more knowledge, provide them the precise knowledge with the rice, and they know that is uh, how is their farmer. They know it's other well, so that they also encourage the farmer to participate more and more in the training. Mm, okay, and what about the pest retailer then? How can you encourage them of you know, to course, join the project? You see, the uh, retailer is uh, how to say, does he have? Uh, is managed uh, managed by the local uh, authority, so they easily to call them to come because mm -hmm. uh, if they not follow with the instruction of the local authority, so that they have problem in the future with mm -hmm. their business. So every time the local we need the, the, the how to say that the cooperation with the local authority to provide the training, they we call the retailers come to the some uh, conference hall and then sit together, and then we provide the training. Mm. Of course, they, they have to gain more knowledge on the how is IBM, what type of best of the crop, what should you advise mm. for the farmer. So, the, our master trainer provide them, and then at the end of the training days, they have uh, ev evaluate. So, some retailer they be so scared that they cannot pass the, 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 the test. And they stay and they said, okay, can I pass or something that so that they they gain the knowledge from the training mm. and then of course we have to evaluate this when they apply how they apply they have to record it in the future we have to evaluate but so far they are participated and uh, learning about our program. Okay so, so these are a very a beneficial I would say experience that you have learned okay yep. so far but a very you know just only a small bit of your experience or lesson learned here. So in the next break here we learn more on how and what you learned you know, from doing this project and also key players in driving the success in this project as well. So don't go away, please stay tuned on the program. 
Hi, welcome back to the program, and we are on our last break now on Be My Guest, and I'm Soro Sharat and APN, and we are still with Mr. Bin, the project officer of Orison SAS. Okay, and we will continue with this project, okay, which is um, GAZ, okay, Crop Life project here. And I have one question to ask you that is the key to success. What should be a key to success, okay, if this project is to be launched soon in eight months mm -hmm. and it's going to be a successful project? Okay, so uh, you see that uh, we start our project uh, in uh, 2015 until now. So we still, uh, the project will end in uh, 2017. So far, we also does is uh, learn that uh, how can we manage the, how how can we uh, make the project so far is uh, very successfully here. Is uh, the first of all that is again that with the beneficiary that is the farmer. So when we see that uh, the farmer is will be very interested in participating with the training if we provide them the good training good knowledge so they definitely they will come and mm -hmm. they get, they gain the benefits from the training of course so and then the farmer they also recognize that this uh, application of uh, integrated pet management or we so called as IBM is uh, they can adopt and then uh, adopt and then they can diverse to different season because you see that in Vietnam they carry out in uh, one year there are three uh, Rice season crop is there, so they can adopt it for each season, depend upon the situation of the climate, of the pressure, of the pest and disease, etc. And of course, that's this. Uh, we try to link the farmer with the uh, various uh, private partner who is uh, buying their product mm -hmm. and selling their product. Mm -hmm. So that is farmer also very interested uh, at the. Government level is uh, plant production department, and also that is uh, a master trainer. So they they also adopted our uh, uh, IPM concept in the uh, later on they, they found that the responsible use of chemical is uh, play very important role in their work daily work. So that they can merge the activity together with our uh, project activity together to uh, provide the training for the farmer and. Uh, for pesticide retailers, so that they also recognize the important role of their business. Mm. So they want to sustain their, their business, so they have to follow up with the, the strong relationship with the farmer. They are by uh, right way with the farmer, so farmer will come back to their mm. shop later on. Okay. So that's a very strong point of our project. Mm. And at the project management, I mean that's the uh, GIZ and CropLight International, so at the early stage of the project, we recognize that this is a strong uh, cooperation for a whole stakeholder here mm. is the key success for the project. Okay, so it's a all connection and communication yep. of the stakeholders. So yep. you know, none of the organization will be able to drive sure, the success of this project yep. here. Now, what about any experiences or lesson learned from joining and driving mm, this project? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, during the second years of uh, the project, we uh, also uh, doing our uh, how to say that is uh, monitoring and evaluation of uh, our activity. Mm -hmm. So uh, we also uh, carry out a survey uh, of the farmer who, uh, before they uh, participate to the IBM training program, and after they participate to the training program. So how is different of their uh, how to say uh, technique uh, and also their income. So uh, before they. Uh, participate the training, they apply more or less around 9 to 10 uh, spray mm. per season, per crop season. But after that, they can reduce up to 6 uh, spray. So you see that uh, uh, they can uh, reduce their input. They can reduce their labor cost. So uh, we remember that uh, they, um, after evaluation, so the production cost, they can reduce up to 17%. Mm -hmm. And the benefits, uh, gross margin is increased around 15%. Mm -hmm. So after participate the training. So that's it, the key success. So, so far, that's it. 
from 10, 9 to 10 application, they reduce to 6 to 7 application. Mm. So that is a very uh, key successful of the impact of the project. Oh, okay. Yeah. And is there any, any other feedback from other partnership or you know, um, organization? Mm, yeah, so far is, uh, of course, our partner, uh, sponsor bus partner here is uh, CropLight International. So they are very interested and they see that is uh, CIZ and uh, local institution together working on the IPM program for the farmer. Mm. So with the key uh, successful and impact is there, so they are very interested and they are happy with our work. And uh, the CropLight International, they also, uh, their own come to Vietnam, especially come to the project site to make a, a short uh, film mm. or clip to how to say that to, 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 to provide more information to the work why to see that's how is family life in the Mekong area mm -hmm. how they are working how they are interested in the IPM and how is the local government they are technical they are working with the farmers mm. and how is we working I mean that's GIZ and crop like working so that's the, they make a broader uh, awareness campaign to to work while to see that mm. these uh, farmer working well. Okay, and surely this project is a great model and a great yeah. example yeah. Okay, for and other yeah. people to follow here and yeah, to be so replicated. Yeah, they also expected that we can upscaling in the future with this type of activity. Okay, yeah. and that's all the time we have for our interview today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kap Kun Ka. The project enforced by GAZ and Crop Life successfully promotes sustainable agriculture focusing on food safety and security and improve the practice of farmers via the better use of pesticides and resistant management. And through the project, farmers could participate by applying a wide range of training methods and they are encouraged to be their own leader to make a decision at their own field. And that has been a wrap up of this week of Bima Yes. Thank you very much for tuning in and watching us. For more information, you can log on to thainews.prd .go.th/en and I'm Sarosha Ratnapian Swadika